stop to listen and eventually they're going to come to a stop, isn't they? Back to you. Yeah, that's a search. You know, I've seen a few uh, bike accidents and, you know, they, you know, they come a cropper and... The thing is with cars, I mean, they don't see bikes. I mean, you can be lit up like a Christmas tree on a bike, but they just will not see you. I don't know what it is. I think people blank bikes out, you know, and you've seen some nasty accidents where cars have pulled out in front of bikes and, you know, I think everybody should have to ride a motorbike before they drive a car, but that's just my opinion. Back to you. Yeah, well, bring up a bike, so I was flying round in school. Um, two of them had, two of them are dead from bikes. I mean, I was here when the one in the lamppost and, well, his helmet, it, it was just like a, like a square. Head. So you can imagine his head in it, but, um, you know, I mean, it's, it's okay. I mean, they, they do, he's 160, 180 mile now on these racetracks. They fall off going on the corner, but there's nothing to stop them. So they're okay. I mean, you fall off on a road, you're going to hit a lamppost, a curb or a wall. You've got no chance, you know. Back to you. Yeah, Mike, Whiskey 6, Yankee Bravo, Zulu returning. Yeah, you're absolutely right there, Kevin. I mean, you know, like I say, we used to go up to Donington Park on the track days and, you know, some of the speeds we used to get up to. I mean, I've done 140 mile an hour down the straight there at Donington Park. But then you you, you got to start thinking of the hairpin at the bottom there and... Uh, you know, make sure you take it nice and safely. But as you say, if you're on the open road and you're doing, you know, silly speeds and, and you come a cropper, then, you know, you're going to be wasted pretty much unless you're extremely lucky. Back to you. Mike Whiskey 6, Kilo Echo, Quebec returning. Yeah, that's right. I haven't heard Alan on. I gave Alan a show to earlier. He uh, texted me one day in the week and said he was on, but I was on HF and I didn't. My phone was downstairs, you know, but I'm mostly on HF. I'm hardly ever on VHF. I listen to it, but I don't hardly go on it that much. It's every time I'm on it, my HF is still on both sides of it, you know. I think I, I like HF, HF more, but um, I don't mind VHF. I mean, VHF is more local, you know, but I don't mind either. They're both all right. Back to you. Mike Whiskey 6, Yankee Bravo Zulu returning. Yeah, I, uh, I like HF. Being on HF, you know, um, what day is it? Sunday today. Yesterday I was on HF, sort of flicking through the channels and never got through to anybody. But uh, I know the first um, CQ I had was, was on HF and it was from uh, from a guy in uh, in Italy, uh, Catatonia, is it? He's down near Sicily. And uh, I managed to hit him, uh, and that was on the 15 metre band. Um, he uh, said that the, the signal wasn't exceptionally strong, but he could make uh, make conversation with me. Um, we sort of tend to, to flick between the two on this one. We've got the, the L2, like the one we've got at the club, and I just press the uh, A and B buttons, and it sort of takes me backwards and forwards. But um, it's still learning, and uh, I find amateur radio quite, uh, quite addictive. Back to you. I still got my NATO from the 1980s, you know, NATO 2000, and that's um, SSB, that is. Um, the amount of times I've been asked to sell that, and I've said, no, it's, it, that's it, I'll keep it, I'll keep it till I go, you know, but um, it's been a good rig, and I, uh, I actually replaced the um, light in the meter no longer, and that was the first time the back has ever been off it since we bought it, you know. But, um, yeah, it's a good old rig, but... I was on, I turned on CP one day in a week and it was busy as hell. I couldn't believe it, you know. I have most of the channels, it was, it was really busy. I was quite surprised, actually. Back to you. My Whiskey 6, Yankee Bravo, Zulu returning. Yeah, uh, CB, I mean, back in the 80s, I mean, when it was all the craze, you know, we, I had a little uh, CB radio stuck in the car and it was busy, you know, as anything. I've, I've got one now uh, stuck in the car in the Land Rover. Um, that I use for the, the 4x4 response uh, organisation I belong to. Um, I keep trying to educate people to come onto the... Three, nine. I think the, um, the downside 
hard is they have to sit in exam for it. But yeah, the um, I find with the CB that um, sometimes people are on. But if you go on the um, what is it? The uh, it's a dual band now. They're sort of uh, for the UK and they're for Europe as well. You get a lot of fun stuff on there. But uh, we do have it on occasionally. Back to you. Yeah, that's right. I think that's that's the thing. I mean, my brother go, goes off roading and he sticks a CB in, in there, you know, but it's like he said, you could just 40 pound, 50 pound, you can buy a good one these days and just throw it in and, you know, not care if it gets stolen and, you know, it's not a lot of money to lose and it gives you contact with somebody, you know, it's, it's good, but um, that's, that's what he likes, he, he never take a ham radio exam, never, he said he would never do it, you know, but um, like I say, it's just the fact that it's easy, isn't it? And a lot of people like that. Back to you. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I know when, you know, I first had a, a CB uh, radio, it was called uh, Ham International. It was a little 80-channel uh, AM rig, you know, and we had a DV27 parked up on the car then. It was all the craze. And uh, we used to have a lot of fun on it, you know. We used to go on fox hunts and all of that sort of stuff where somebody would go off and hide and then you'd use the radio to try and find where they were and you'd win a prize at the end of it. It was a lot of fun, but then, of course, it all died out when uh, mobile phones uh, come in and uh, now nowadays, I mean, as you say, sometimes they get busy, but then sometimes, you know, you can flick through the channels and find nobody there. But uh, that's the way it goes, I suppose. Anyway, Kevin, back to you. My Whiskey 6, Kilo Echo, Quebec returning. Yeah, I think that's just the way it is. I mean, you can put VHF on some nights, some nights you can... I'm on um, WR. It's mostly with WR repeat I listen to. And there can be nobody, you know? Nobody for hours on that. But um, that's just the way it is, isn't it? I mean, uh, it's unfortunate. It'd be better if it was busier. But then again, I suppose there's people like me who like VHF and don't come on who like HF and don't come on the VHF so much, you know, so I suppose I'm to blame as well, really, you know, I should be ma making use of it. So, back to you. My Whiskey 6, Yankee Bravo Zulu, returning to My Whiskey 6, Kilo Echo Quebec. Yeah, you're absolutely right there, Kevin. I mean, that, that's, that's the one thing I like about um, this this uh, radio we've got. You can switch between the two, you know, you can go VHF or HF, and... Um, you know, some, some nights we we sit and flick through the channels and uh, on the HF and I think, well, we'll see who's about on VHF and then we go down onto the VHF. It mostly repeats is around here. And because uh, um, Ian tends to be on the Somerset one, doesn't he, the WR one? And uh, we listen to him quite often. Um, I haven't made contact with him yet. I must give him a shout at some point. for a couple of days now. So, it's, all, it's, all, it's funny. Often when I do hear him, I'm sort of just laying down, you know, and it, it's just on in the background. But, uh, no, I think, uh, mind you, with a CB, a lot of radios now, I mean, I got one here, the X5000 and KPO, and it's a crack, brilliant radio, you know, and it's... I quite like the never meet a band, you know? especially the um, side bands, that's what I like, so, and of course there's a few people around here still on them, so, I find I get, I talk to the local people, you know, so, no, it's pretty good, I do, I do, I still use them, you know, back to you. My Whiskey 6 Yankee Bravo Zulu returning, uh, yeah, the uh, CV was, uh, was good uh, in the 80s. And, yeah, you're right, people do still use them occasionally. And I think with the, the when you've got the sideband ones, you know, they're sort of a bit more of a rarity. Uh, because back in the 80s, they were quite illegal, you know, and uh, a lot of people had them. And it was uh, trying to, you know, um, use them without sort of uh, upsetting too many people. But uh, no, it was good fun in the days. But... Uh, Anyway, Kevin, uh, 
ahead. I'm going to have to see about going off and uh, getting a bit of tea. I haven't had my tea yet. Anyway, back to you, Kevin. Yeah, I'm afraid I haven't had my tea yet either. So, I mean, last time I seen the wife was going to have a shower, so maybe I missed my tea because I've been sat here all evening. So, I don't know whether it's brave enough to ask her, you know, back to you. <laughs> yeah, my whiskey six, Yankee Bravo Zulu return. Yeah, if you ask for your tea, mate, she might throw it at you, you know. But uh, there we are. Anyway, Kevin, um, I'll say 73s uh, for now, and um, I'll catch up with you on Tuesday. This is my whiskey six, Yankee Bravo Zulu returning for my, to my whiskey six kilo echo Quebec for your finals. Yep, lovely. I'll see you at the club on um, Tuesday. I'll definitely be there. So I just mag you in, yeah. Oh, okay, and right, 70 please. Oh, I see you up on Tuesday. All the best.